Schwinn Fitness. In this video, we will show you how to assemble the Schwinn 470 elliptical. Begin by selecting an area where you're going to set up and operate your elliptical machine. For safe operation, the machine must be located on a hard, level surface. Please allow a minimum work area of 76.2 inches and 118.1 inches. Be sure that the workout space you chose has adequate height clearance, taking into consideration the height of the user and the maximum height of the pedals with the incline fully engaged. Before you begin the assembly, please make sure you read the assembly manual thoroughly as it contains important safety warnings and assembly tips. Please note, there are some steps in the assembly process that might require two people to help with the assembly. Some components of the machine can be heavy or unwieldy. Please use a second person when doing assembly involving these parts. Start the assembly by checking the parts list. A right R and left L decal have been applied to the parts to assist with assembly. The following tools are recommended for this assembly. Step 1. Attaching the front stabilizer. Begin step 1 by locating the frame, part 11. Next, attach the front stabilizer, part 13, to the front bottom side of the frame. Before attaching the stabilizer, remove the four screws and washers. Set the hardware aside for now. Next, pivot the frame and slowly push the stabilizer towards the frame. Match the frame and stabilizer holes. Using the previously removed hardware, secure the stabilizer to the frame. Place the curb washer first, followed by the lock washer and screw. Insert the screws from the previously removed holes, matching the frame and stabilizer holes. Fully tighten the screws using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Tighten all hardware and repeat these steps for the opposite side. Step 1 is now complete. Step 2. Attaching the rail assembly. Begin step 2 by locating the rail assembly, part number 9. The back of the frame has a plate at the bottom. This plate slides in between the two plates located on the front of the rail assembly. Before attaching the rail assembly, remove the four screws and washers from the front and the four screws and washers from the top. Set the hardware aside for now. Next, push the rail assembly towards the frame and slowly slide the frame plate between the two rail assembly plates. Using the previously removed hardware, secure the rail assembly to the frame. Start with the four top screws, washers, and nuts. Insert the hardware as shown. Fully tighten the screws using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Use the socket tool to hold the nut in place. Next, secure the front of the rail assembly using the previously removed hardware. Place the curve washer first, followed by the lock washer and screw. Insert the screws from the previously removed holes matching the frame and stabilizer holes. Fully tighten the screws using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Tighten all hardware and repeat these steps for the opposite side. Step 2 is now complete. Step 3. Attaching the console mast. Begin step 3 by placing the console mast, part number 1, on top of the frame. The bottom of the console mast has one cable sticking out, and the top part has two cables sticking out. Before mounting the console mast, locate the upper shroud and insert it through the bottom of the console mast. After the shroud is in place, connect the console mast cable to the frame cable. Make sure all cables clip and are correctly connected. After connecting the cables, push the cables towards the inside of the frame and lower the console mast matching the square end plate with the square end plate on the frame. Do not cut or crimp the cables. Next, secure the console mast to the frame using four Part D screws. 
four part G lock washers, and four part B flat washers. Place the curve washer first, followed by the lock washer and screw. Fully tighten the screws using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. After securing the hardware, slowly lower the shroud to cover the top portion of the frame. Make sure it clicks into place. Finally, locate the shroud cap, part number 18, and attach it to the top of the shroud. Slightly open the cap, slide it into the console mast, and lower it into position until it snaps into place. Step 3 is now complete. Step 4. Attaching the legs. Begin Step 4 by placing the left leg, part number 10, at the bottom left side of the assembly. The front portion of the leg slides into the rod on the side of the frame and the back portion goes over the rail assembly. Secure the left leg using one part A screw, one part G lock washer, one part G wide washer, and one part F wave washer. Before attaching the left leg, slide the wave washer into the rod on the side of the frame. After the wave washer is in place, set the left leg in place. Next, place the wide washer first, followed by the lock washer and the screw. Fully tighten the screw using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side and attach the right leg, part number 16, as previously shown. Once both legs have been tightly secured, step 4 is now complete. Step 5. Attaching the arm pivot rod and lower handlebar arms. Begin step five by locating the lower left handlebar arm, part number seven, and the arm pivot rod, part number three. The handlebar arm gets attached to the console mast using one part E screw, one part G lock washer, one part C wide washer, and one part F wave washer. Start by slowly sliding the arm pivot rod through the console mast too. Next, slide the wave washer through the rod, followed by the left lower handlebar arm. Place the wide washer first, followed by the lock washer and screw. Fully tighten the screw using the provided 13mm wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side and attach the lower right handlebar arm, part number 19, as previously shown. Fully tighten all hardware. Step 5 is now complete. Step 6. Attaching the pedals. Begin step 6 by locating the left pedal, part 8. The left pedal attaches to the bottom of the lower handlebar arm and to the back end of the left leg. A right R and left L decal have been applied to the parts to assist with assembly. Before attaching the pedal, insert one part F wave washer into the rod located underneath the pedal. Push the washer into place. Next, pivot the pedal and slide it into place. Secure the pedal to the left lower handlebar arm using one part A screw, one part G lock washer, one part C wide washer, and one part H pivot sleeve. The pivot sleeve has a keyway that must match the keyway on the lower handlebar arm. Insert the pivot sleeve through the arm and pedal from the inside facing outwards. Insert the hardware and fully tighten the screw using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Use the wrench tool to hold the sleeve in place. Next, secure the pedal to the left leg using one part A screw, one part G lock washer, and one part C wide washer. Fully tighten the screw using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side and attach the right pedal, part number 17, as previously shown.
Once both pedals have been tightly secured, step six is now complete. Step seven, attaching the upper handlebar arms. Begin step seven by locating the left upper handlebar arm, part number six, and placing it on the left side of the assembly. The arm has hardware located on the bottom. The hardware must be removed before attaching the arm. Remove and place the hardware aside. Next, slowly insert the bottom end of the upper handlebar arm onto the open end of the lower handlebar arm. Adjust the handlebar and make sure the bottom holes match the holes on the lower handlebar arm. Fully secure the left upper handlebar arm using the previously removed hardware. Fully tighten the screws using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Fully tighten the hardware on the front and back side of the arm. Finally, repeat these steps for the opposite side and attach the right upper handlebar arm, part number 20 as previously shown. Step seven is now complete. Step eight, attaching the handlebar shrouds. Begin step eight by locating one outer handlebar shroud, part number 15, and one part I screw. Place the outer shroud on the outside of the left upper handlebar arm. Push the outer handlebar shroud into place, matching the hole on the shroud with the hole on the handlebar arm. Insert the screw through the shroud and into the handlebar arm. Fully tighten the screw using the provided number two Phillips screwdriver. Repeat these steps on the other side and secure the inner handlebar shroud, part number 14, as previously shown. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Attach the inner and outer handlebar shrouds as previously shown. Fully tighten all hardware. Step eight is now complete. Step nine, attaching the static handlebar. Begin step nine by locating the static handlebar, part number two. The static handlebar goes onto the top opening of the console mast. Before attaching the static handlebar, remove the hardware that is pre-installed on the bottom of the static handlebar. Place the hardware aside for now. Next, route the cable sticking out of the bottom through the handlebar hole and have it sticking upwards. Slowly slide the static handlebar into the console mast. Take the cables from the console mast and route them through the center hole of the static handlebar. Take care not to cut or crimp the cables. Finally, secure the static handlebar to the console mast using the previously removed hardware. Insert two sets of hardware through the side and one set through the front as shown. Fully tighten the screws using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Step nine is now complete. Step 10, attaching the water bottle holder. Begin step 10 by locating the water bottle holder, part number four. The water bottle holder gets attached to the static handlebar. Before attaching the water bottle holder, remove the three screws located on the sides of the holder. Remove the screws using the provided number two Phillips screwdriver. Set the hardware aside for now. Next, lower the holder into the interior of the static handlebar. Slowly snap the holder edge over the handlebar rods. Secure the holder using the previously removed screws. Insert the screws through the previously removed holes. Fully tighten the screws using the provided number two Phillips screwdriver. After all hardware has been tightly secured, Step 10 is now complete. Step 11, removing the console hardware. Begin step 11 by locating the console, part number five. Next, remove the hardware located on the back of the console. Remove the screws using the provided number two Phillips screwdriver. Set the hardware aside for now. 
Step 11 is now complete. Step 12, attaching the console. Begin step 12 by locating the console, part number five. The cable sticking out the static handlebar attached to the console. Align the clips on the cable connectors and make sure the connectors lock. Plug the cables to the appropriate connection on the back of the console. After connecting the cables, slowly lower the console and mount it to the square plate on the static handlebar. Do not crimp the cables. Match the four holes of the console to the four holes of the handlebar plate. Finally, secure the console using the hardware that was previously removed in step 11. Fully tighten the screws using the provided number two Phillips screwdriver. Step 12 is now complete. Step 13, connecting the power cord. Begin step 13 by placing the power cord, part number 21, to the front near the bottom of the frame assembly. The power cord connects to the bottom front of the frame. Next, push the power cord into location and make sure that the power cord wire stays clear of all moving parts. Finally, connect this machine to a properly grounded outlet only. See the grounding instructions on the assembly manual for more information. When ready to operate the machine, be sure to turn on the power with the power switch. Congratulations, you have now completed the assembly of the Schwinn 470 elliptical. Before using the elliptical, please make a final inspection. You can now remove any protective cover from the face of the console, as well as the plastic scratch guard strips from the rails. Please inspect the machine to ensure that all hardware is tight and components are properly assembled. Do not use until machine has been fully assembled and inspected for correct performance in accordance with the assembly manual. Please reference the assembly manual for workouts, troubleshooting, and other program features. Enjoy your new Schwinn 470 elliptical. Brought to you by Schwinn Fitness.